And may the Lord bless all of you wonderful, wonderful people who've tuned in to this another in a series of radio ministries that's heard each and every Lord's Day Sunday morning. A beautiful day it is to be alive, a beautiful day to be counted one among the children of God and to have another privilege and opportunity of making it right with the Lord Jesus. Draw near to your radio and let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, we want to thank you this morning for awakening us and clothing us in our right minds. Oh God, letting us see a brand new day. We thank you. I pray for those, dear Lord, who've tuned in to this radio broadcast. Those, dear Lord, who are sick upon their hospital beds, behind prison bars, or wherever my voice is heard. I pray that you would move by your mighty power. You're God of the heavens and you're God of the universe and you're God of all mankind. Move upon that bed of sickness and affliction. Move in behalf of that individual, dear God, who have problems and have been seeking you. I pray that you would grant unto them their spoken and unspoken request in Jesus' name. I ask it in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Let me take this opportunity to invite you to worship the Lord with us today at Holy Temple Church of God in Christ, 572 Clinton Street, downtown Buffalo, New York. This broadcast comes to you each Sunday morning from 9.15 to 9.30, and we are the hour of power. The gospel of Jesus Christ says that it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe. I want to talk to you from the book of James 4, 1 through 10, and uh, how many of you uh, know people that have foul attitudes? I want to talk about having a godly attitude. I want you to read that scripture in your spare time and you will find some goodies in there. But I'm going to give to you some of those scriptures as I talk along. And uh, if you will, and you have time uh, to just follow me, listen to what I have to say, and you too will agree. Uh, today we live in a society uh, where people are rewarded for doing absolutely nothing. And let me say to you, that's not good. That is not good. It used to be if you played little league baseball or football and you worked hard at becoming a good player, at the end of the season, they would give you a well-deserved trophy. Now, I want to show you the difference in back then or in the day as we sometimes call it and now. In the now, in this age in which we live, someone said this was showing partiality and those who did not win a trophy felt bad because all the players now get a trophy. Uh-huh. Well, let me say this. God doesn't work that way. God only rewards those who are worthy to be rewarded. Oh, I remember the great words of the Apostle Paul after he had labored on this earth, labored with people. He said at the end of his journey, I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. Therefore, there was a crown of righteousness, he says, awaiting me at that day, and not only to me, but unto all of them that love his appearing. That crown is his reward. Oh, I'm working for that crown. How about you? I'm living in hopes of one day receiving my crown. God rewards those who are worthy to be rewarded. He lifts up those humble who humble themselves in his sight. 
Look at the last verse of our text, verse 10. It says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters, the proud man lifts himself up by his own bootstraps. Oh yes, but God resists him. The humble man is lifted up and rewarded by God. He draws near to those. God draws near to those who will draw near to him. That's right. The humble man is rewarded with the presence of God. Well, we'll look at verse 8. We, we see here it says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Uh -huh. Perhaps you know someone who has accepted the Lord, but they are miserable. They are miserable because they have a raging spiritual war that's going on inside of them. Yes, have you noticed that they are like the woman in the Bible who went from physician to physician and steadily got worse? Uh -huh. That is, they have tried many physicians just like she did. They tried many different kinds of medications, and they even had probably had counselors. And if they are not getting worse, they are certainly not getting any better. The reason there was a war going on inside of them is because they lived their life lusting after everything they can see. You see, the problem for some of these folk is they desire the things of God, but they also desire the things of the world. You can't have both. You've got to make a decision. Whom will you choose? Whom will you follow? God or Satan? God or the world? There is that constant war going on in their life that is lusting for everything the devil placed before them. Well, why, why does the Lord resist those who desire the things of the world? He wants us to resist the devil and to crave him, to come after him. He said if you come after him, he will not cast you out. He wants us to resist people, resist the things of the world. That's right and follow him. We have so many people today who have doubtful and live doubtful lives. That's right. Why do they doubt the promises of God? Because the devil has thoroughly brainwashed them that in order to have the best they, that life has to offer, they would have to look to the world. Well, the devil has totally brainwashed them. Well, someone might be asking, Pastor, how does someone brainwash uh, someone? Repeating something over and over again makes people believe it. No matter how stupid it is, we find politicians uses this brainwashing technique today over and over again. They'll say something like, you know that's right, yes, that's right. Studies have found that if just one person repeats the same opinion three times, it has a whopping 90% chance of converting three different people in the group to have the same opinion. And that's how both politics and conspiracy theories work. Well, the devil has brainwashed people hundreds of times through music, through radio, and television. Satan has been so successful in brainwashing people to have a good time in life, they have to follow him. The Bible tells us he is a liar and the father of lies. Look at all the people he's brainwashed. And the only way they can cope with life is with some kind of mind-altering drug, alcohol, or just drugs. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. People of the world have been brainwashed. Notice what Jesus says in James. Uh, he tells us in verse 2, James says, ye have not because ye ask not. 
And the devil has been so successful in brainwashing people to believe what he says, to believe what the world says, to believe the things of the world. They don't even come to God for the help they need. And these people will never find the happiness they're looking for in this life. Well, God resists these people who have the attitude that sin is the way to go. They don't even bother to ask God for the help they need. The Bible says, seek and you shall find, ask and it shall be given, knock and it shall be opened. We need to ask God for what we want. If you only stop and ask him, I hope you're listening to me. This message will give you brand new life if you would receive it and believe it. Only a life of trusting in the Lord instead of trusting in things Amen. And people will enable us to draw close to God. Well, James even tell us about selfish living. He says we must have anticipated that some would say, but I pray all the time and I'm not satisfied. James was saying that, yes, you pray, but you pray for the wrong purposes. Uh -huh. Look at verse 3. Ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. When we talk to God, we must ask him, ask him about the desires we have. We need to talk to him and we need to seek to know. We need to seek to know his opinion. We need to seek him to know his desire for us. We need to know that his desire, whether or not it is the desire that we are seeking is good or evil, are we asking for something that is good? Are we asking for something that is bad for us? Is this something for our pleasure and gratification? Or is it something that will glorify God? Oh, I tell you, I don't want anything but something that will glorify my Father, the Father which is in heaven. Oh, I wish I had time to finish this great word of God to you this morning, but time, however, will not permit me. I'm going to ask you, those of you in the Buffalo area, to meet me at Holy Temple 572 Clinton Street, downtown Buffalo, New York. God bless you, and may the Lord smile upon you, and may you have a happy, happy day. You come to do. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. You and you and you and